俺は人間をやめるぞジャジャー Welcome to Can You Beat YBA with Only Zombies? Now with extra burning to death. In truth, our story begins with trying to actually get the vampire spec. The problem with this challenge is. Oh. Oh, a, a captcha for picking up items now. I wonder if they know that by color coding this, it's probably gonna be bypassed in like three days. The problem with me not having played this game in like four months or however long it's been is I still don't really understand this new map. And because I don't really understand this new map, I didn't know where the hell to go in order to find the elder vampire to even get the spec to begin with. And you know what would have been a novel concept when they reworked vampire? Oh, what's that? Make it so that you didn't have to go through all this nonsense in order to get vampire anymore? Yeah, they didn't do that, so、uh, here we are. You had one job, guys. You could have gotten rid of subspecs, you could have reworked the whole vampire thing. Ah,、uh, forget it. Anyways, the sewers all look the same. So、uh, let's just say it took a while and ended at that, yeah? Eventually, I did find out where I needed to go. So all we need to do is grab the vampire spec, and it's time to get this show on the road. Wait. What? You're far too weak to learn from me? Come back when you're stronger? What the hell is that supposed to mean? So, I might be the first person in the history of ever to go to the vampire and not be able to get the vampire spec. What does far too weak even mean? Do I not have enough worthiness? Do I not have enough levels? How many levels do I need? All of these questions and more will not be answered by this NPC because. All they do is tell you, you're too weak, tough luck, get on out of here, scrub. So, uh, yeah, I guess it's time to level up. So, I did the level one quest up to level five and figured, hey, maybe the whole vampire thing is tied to worthiness. So, I got a bunch of worthiness, at least enough to fulfill an arrow, because, you know, that feels like it makes sense. And I went back to the elder vampire. What do you think he told me? Take a wild guess. You're too weak, come back later. Of course. So at this point, I was like, well, if I'm gonna have to be doing all these early game quests, gold experience probably isn't the right answer here. It's just not that powerful. So maybe I'll roll for another stand with my one storage slot. Mr. President. Of course. Naturally. And now you may be asking, well, Eclipse, why don't you just roke up Mr. President? But if I do that, then I lose my vampire race, and then I need to get another $10,000 for the spec and another mask, which means bringing on another count or getting lucky. So I'm not gonna do that, so I'm stuck with Mr. President. But then I'm like, okay, well, if I don't want Mr. President and I can't use a roka, then I can trade Mr. President to another account and then roka it over there. And that way I can inadvertently get new stands until I get something worthwhile. So I bring on another account, I go to trade the stand away, and. Yeah, you can't. Of course you can't. And this is the point where one of my friends was like, hey, do you want to play some Call of Duty DMZ? And I was 35 minutes into the recording, had made no tangible progress.、Uh, take a wild guess as to what I did that night. It's the dawn of a new day, and it's time to get back to work. I leveled myself up all the way to level 10, went back to the vampire, and finally I can get the vampire spec. So there you go. For anyone curious, 
Vampire is level locked to level 10. I have no idea why, but it is. I took a look in the skill tree and found what I wanted. Mastered Zombie Creation. This ability makes it so that every single NPC that you kill will be reborn as a zombie and it will fight for you. And that's the premise of the whole challenge. The idea is to defeat every enemy in the game with only zombies. For some reason I decided to close out of my skill tree, climb up the ladder to go to the surface, open it back up, and unlock zombie creation. But wait. Oh no. I unlocked the wrong thing? Because the skill tree nonsensically spins itself around when you're using it, I went down the wrong path. Now I've got a bunch of useless crap I can't use, and no skill points left. Oh, come on. So, I guess you know the drill by now. I can't get rid of the spec or reset my skill points on it unless I roca it. So, I gotta get another account in here. I gotta get another stone mask. I gotta get more money. I gotta roca, and then I gotta go get the spec back. And finally, I have the ability that I need to complete this challenge. I decided to test the strength of my newfound compatriots by kindly asking Fugo to become my zombie slave and then using him to kill Jotaro. And Jotaro killed me. Okay, well, um, this might be a bit harder than I thought it'd be. Kicking off the actual storyline itself, I used a zombified Leaky Eye Luka to kill the security guards. And this is where I first started to get a taste of strength in numbers. Unsurprisingly, the more zombies that you have, the more your damage output increases. And as I zombified more security guards, things just got easier and easier. After the security guards, unsurprisingly, Luca got absolutely demolished. When it came to fighting Bruno though, I had a bit of a realization. Somebody on the development team decided it would be a fun idea to make it so that way the zombies despawn after a certain amount of time. This is a real problem, because Bruno is really far from any of these packs of NPCs that I've seen. So I guess my only real option is defeat Pesci early and then use Pesci to take out Bruno. Which shouldn't be so bad, because Pesci does a ton of damage and is incredibly obnoxious. Except for when he's a zombie. Because when he's a zombie, he's borderline f***ing useless. Half the time he can't even land his M1 attacks, never mind using any of his abilities. He just stares at Bruno as he beats the crap out of me. And before Bruno is even close to dead, Pesci just up and quits. He's gone. Pop, see ya. So now we've got a real problem because I can't use Pesci to kill Bruno. So how the hell am I gonna kill him? I thought maybe use a zombie Giacho, kill Pesci, and then 2v1 Bruno, but Pesci just murders Giacho way before I get the chance. So maybe Giacho is the answer, except for no, he isn't because he's barely any better than Pesci is. Maybe zombie Jotaro? Nope. That doesn't work either. We're on the first boss of the game, and I'm already stuck. Or am I? It's time to go back to basics. I'm gonna kill security guards, and then I'll drag them across the entire map and hope they can DPS out the boss before they despawn. Does it work? Hell yeah, it does. Soft lock be gone. Next boss is Fugo. And just like with the last one, he's kind of far from a lot of the NPCs, so I tried to use Jotaro again and predictably it didn't work, again. So what's the answer when Jotaro doesn't work? Overwhelming numbers, that's always the answer. But how do I get NPCs here before they despawn? Well, as it turns out, when you're too far from your zombie compatriots, they'll teleport to you, which means that I can make use of the fast travel system to fast travel and teleport my zombies across the map. So I introduced Fugo to my new zombie thug friends and he wasn't too much of a fan. Our next boss on the docket is Pesci, and he should be relatively easy. Not only does he not have a barrage to screw with my guys, but he's also relatively close to the security guards. So I can just grab security guards, go straight here, and beat him up. Now the question is, did that work? And the fact that I'm asking that question at all means, of course it f***ing didn't, why would it? As it turns out, Pesci has a lot of health, and because Pesci has a lot of health, um, they just don't do enough damage? It's not really that they don't do enough damage, it's more so that Pesci has a tendency of blocking their attacks, and they also have a tendency of just missing and being unable to land them. So try and try and try as I might, I just couldn't out DPS Pesci. He wouldn't die. 
I even went through the effort of getting the world alternate universe so that way I could use knives and my gun in order to aggro a bunch of NPCs so I would have as much time to work with as possible. I even got Dio in there a few times. But it didn't matter, he just wouldn't die. So I guess this is the soft lock. We've reached the soft lock, right? Think again! Remember how I said that the NPCs have a tendency of missing their attacks? Well, as it turns out, if I stick myself straight into the corner and hold F, they can actually land their attacks. And they do my job for me, as I expect them to. Pesci soft lock? I don't think so. We're moving forward. I applied the same corner technique to take on Giacho. Unfortunately, I got him down to like, one health. And he didn't die. But then, I was really glad I got the world alternate universe, because bada boom bada bam, projectiles, one more zombie, see ya, you're done. But now, it's on to the final boss, Diavolo. And in the immortal words of Mitten Squad, this is where the real game begins. Diavolo is really far from everything. And the fast travel that's closest to him still requires you to take a really long roundabout path to get up to it. All that time spent running up to him is time that your NPC despawn timer is quickly ticking down. Knowing this, I decided to go for the closest NPC anyway, Jotaro Kujo Part 6. I'll let you take a guess on how that one turned out. Yeah, could have gone better. That meant that my only hope in terms of strategy was to use strength in numbers, as expected. But also as expected, this just didn't work. I tried everything imaginable. Security guards, didn't work. Alpha thugs, didn't work. At one point, I tried to gather the alpha thugs, some security officers, and some normal thugs all in the same spot, kill them all, and then get there in order to have as many zombies as possible. Unsurprisingly, didn't work. Other boss NPCs, didn't work. So I guess what it really comes down to is I have to kill Jotaro part six. He's my only hope here. Oh yeah, now it's go time. Ah, oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Okay, so if I use Jotaro part six, he doesn't die. If I use other bosses, he doesn't die. If I use thugs, he doesn't die. So it's just impossible? He can't die. GG's? Well, as it turns out, no. The thing I noticed on this attempt is that Jotaro didn't despawn. He was killed. So I figure if I can get another Jotaro Kujo part six, maybe I've got a chance. The question on my mind is, of course, how long does Jotaro Kujo last? So I get him, I set a timer, and I decide to compare him against other NPCs. But what I didn't expect was to learn that he doesn't despawn, ever. Not only does he not despawn, but one of the times when I was playing, Diavolo didn't despawn either. From here, I could aggro Jotaro, kill him again, get another zombie Jotaro, and then finish the job. And, uh, and, and then this happened. No! I tried this strategy several times, especially trying to make sure that Jotaro didn't take damage so Diavolo wouldn't kill him all to varying degrees of success, with none of them actually working. But then, a breakthrough. I'd killed Jotaro, gotten a zombie Jotaro, and went AFK for a bit. I tabbed back in in panic when I heard my zombie Jotaro attacking something. Jotaro part six had respawned, and now my zombie was attacking him. I was like, God damn it, why do I gotta deal with this right now? Until I realized that Jotaro wasn't fighting back. He just stood there and took it, so, does this mean what I think it means? Holy shit. There are two of them. Diavolo 
isn't gonna stand a goddamn chance. As it turns out for anyone curious, you can have a maximum of six zombie Jotaros at any given time. Is this a glitch? Sure. Does it count as cheating? Maybe. But I don't care because this shit is hilarious. And you know what? They'll probably patch this out of the game, but uh, don't. Don't patch this out of the game because this is hysterical. It's also not even a little bit game breaking because I let you in on a little secret. It takes a really long time uh, and the Jotaros die in like one barrage, but irrelevant. This is fucking great. I have a literal conga line of zombie Jotaros. But with my newfound group of friends, there's only one thing left for me to do. 